Less than 50 years ago, this land was lush savanna. But here, as in much of the Sahel, the 5,000 kilometer belt of land that divides the Sahara Desert from the rest of Africa, vegetation has been disappearing. Climate change leading to prolonged periods of drought, land degradation caused by over-farming and over-grazing, as well as deforestation, have turned this once fertile land into desert. But a recent project to plant acacia or gum trees is attempting to reverse that process of desertification. Fatou Say is one of 150 women in this village alone, benefiting from a project begun in 2004 by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, together with the Forestry Department of Senegal and five other countries across the region. For the population, what we have constated is that with the execution of the project, with its mise en œuvre, the population has changed their mentality and comportement. Les populations ont mieux perçu les, les effets et les impacts de l'arbre dans, la, dans leur vie quotidienne, dans l'activité socio-économique. FAO, together with the Forestry Service, provided seeds and seedlings and taught them how to sow and plant the acacia trees, as well as how to extract and market the gum they produce. They were given a tractor with a digger tool, specially adapted to dry land conditions. The half moon shaped holes collect rainwater, ensuring that the young plant roots will have enough water to overcome the long dry season. Fare la buca è molto fatica e poi se ne fanno poche al giorno. Qui si scavano 2-3 metri cubi di terra al giorno, una persona. In Cina i cinesi mi hanno detto sempre ah ma noi ne facciamo 5 metri cubi. Ma il mio sistema ne fa 7.000-10.000 metri cubi di scavo al giorno. Planting of the acacia trees reverses desertification by preventing soil erosion and providing nutrients for other plants and crops to grow. The trees also remove carbon from the atmosphere. Good news from an environmental perspective, but also for the tens of thousands of people living within the Sahel. Acacia is a, a good choice for the project because it is a native tree, so we are not altering biodiversity. It's a tree which has many benefits. It feeds the soil, so it restores its fertility. It is a shelter for crops. It is also providing gum arabic, which has an international market and good for the economy. It also provides fodder for livestock and also food for uh, also the local communities. In a region home to many of the world's poorest countries, the project is changing attitudes and lives. Wow, man, now that seven years after the project began, the acacia trees have reached maturity, the women have also begun extracting and selling the gum for processing. The quantities the women are collecting are small, so rather than selling direct to a processing plant, the gum is sold through a middleman. That man is Isma Saar. A private acacia plantation owner himself, his role is to connect small producers with big companies who buy the gum. <laughs> Personal 
Through him, the gum arrives at this processing plant close to Senegal's capital, Dakar, from where the gum is sold to Europe, the US and elsewhere. The gum is used in the pharmaceutical and food industries, in everything from confectionery to dairy products and soft drinks. With international demand for gum outweighing supply and demand forecast to grow, there is an economic opportunity waiting to be exploited. La gomme arabique constitue une source de revenus supplémentaires aux activités traditionnelles que effectuent les populations. Euh, actuellement, je pense que son rôle est fondamental euh, dans un contexte de détérioration un peu euh, du secteur agricole, euh, de, de baisse donc du cours donc de la racine, ce qui fait que euh, les paysans peuvent, en tout cas, à travers la gomme arabique, avoir des sources supplémentaires et de, de, de revenus qui vont leur permettre de subvenir à leurs besoins quotidiens. Based on the success of the Acacia project, which was funded with more than $5 million by the Italian government, FAO is now in search of further funding to roll the project out on a wider scale, to re-green more of the land bordering the Sahara Desert. So far it was just 13,000 hectares, it was for testing, so now we need to upscale this success elsewhere in other areas in order to achieve the long-term objective of combating desertification and contributing to food security in this region. If FAO can secure the necessary funding, the project will be extended to a total of eight countries, with greater focus placed on good land management and the marketing of the gum, to ensure local communities are able to maximise their incomes. This initiative will help to keep the desert sands at bay, minimising the impacts of climate change while providing economic protection for the millions of vulnerable people living within Africa's drylands.